All right, shalom. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Jonathan, the Code Searcher, and today we're going to talk about the eclipse and CERN. You guys, I had, first of all, several people that messaged me because I didn't, I wasn't aware of this. Um, but also, I started seeing them coming across my feed where everybody's talking about this. So I wanted to, you know, give you a little presentation here because I worked on these codes several years ago. And Scott has recently done, a, a, a produced a couple of more uh, on this very topic. But there's this strange connection with CERN cranking up and the April 8th eclipse. And uh, you guys, I, I suspect that it's got a lot to do with ritual OK, some kind of ritual. And here's why I say that, because, you know, when I studied this years ago, what I noticed about the whole thing and the, and the whole dance with CERN and, and then the video production they did when they live streamed to the whole world, um, this very bizarre, satanic looking um, production, you know, it was just abnormal to me. And so we really dug into this and found, you know, some connections to the Bible, particularly the abyss and um, Abaddon, Apollyon, and uh, the alike, which we know that these beings want to come over to this side, this to this realm. So um, with this eclipse, which is a high portal time, right? Astrologers will tell you that. Um, religious people will tell you that, especially Jewish. Um, but then CERN, choosing this day of all days through the year, this, they're going to do this, right? And this is going to be the last time for a while because they're actually going to upgrade CERN to make it bigger, right? But they're, they've chosen this day to crank up CERN, and we're going to talk about today. I want to I want to play you something really interesting, a fascinating video that End Time Productions did uh, with Tom Horn, the late Tom Horn, who passed away. I've, I've never really seen this video uh, or uh, interview before. Apparently, it was through uh, Skywatch News, maybe. Um, but I want to play that for you and comment on a couple of things. And then we're going to look at a couple of codes. And then I got a little bit from Mark Biltz for you on this, the eclipse and some of the things that he's confirmed um, for, at least for this channel in my research, um, that I've, already, I've been seeing on these things for years. And that is war and um, not just regional war, but world war. OK, so let's go right now to End Time Productions and a excellent uh video um with tom horn you guys i want to play with you right now there is something more supernatural on the drawing board at cern than what is being admitted even adam barker of tech bubble wrote of cern a while back that with the lhc cern are expecting to find other dimensions and open portals to these dimensions. Uh, if you have the image of Stargate in your head right now, you're spot on. That's what he said. And then he went on to draw parallels to the biblical story of Jacob's ladder. Um, perhaps you remember the dream that says, Behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Then Jacob wakes up from his sleep, and he says, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. Um, and he was afraid. And he says, How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven, Genesis 28. Now this ladder, uh, described in the first book of the Bible, describes something like a portal from heaven to earth through which God's angels, interdimensional and spiritual beings from another reality, were traveling. Um, when Jacob wakes up, he refers to the location as a gate, much like today's trendy terms, gateway or stargate. Uh, one of Cern's goals is to recreate Jacob's ladder, according to uh, Marker, and to reopen a portal. Now, Sergio Bertolucci, who is the official director for research and scientific computing at CERN, he was asked a while back about this extra-dimensional doorway by The Register, which is a London and New York-operated science and technology journal. And he didn't hesitate with an enlightening response. He said, yes, out of this door might come something, or we might send something through it. Now, prophecy in numerous parts of the Bible refer to a coming day when portals will be opened and spiritual entities are going to pass through and 
come to the earth. Now, if that's true, and if those verses are accepted for their literal meaning and not written off as some kind of poetic allegory, as some scholars have claimed, then the idea of CERN playing with gateways is a major concern. Uh, this is Houston. Uh, say again, please. And if, as CERN claims, they're only out to explore space, time, matter, particles, and the origin of our known universe and planets from exclusively a scientific or Darwinian-related perspective, if their agenda is unrelated to Bible prophecy entirely, then what is it with all this mystical symbolism that they knowingly are associating themselves with? Wouldn't it be more appropriate for them just to proudly display a polished statue of a particle or some artist depiction of the Big Bang instead of the statue of Shiva? For those who have not yet heard about this controversial piece of art that CERN proudly exhibits between buildings 39 and 40 near the main uh, building of their operation, it stands as really the most visible and celebrated imagery behind their work, Shiva. This is the Hindu god of destruction. In 2004, the government of India, which has had a long-standing friendship with leaders behind the CERN project even before the completion of the Large Hadron Collider, the gifted CERN with this bronze work of an art uh, depicting Shiva as uh, Nataraja, the lord or sometimes king of the dance. This dance that Shiva performs uh, uh, in the sculpture is the one that provides the source of the creation cycle in Hindu mythology. And you guys remember that CERN actually put out a, a production video, and I should have queued that up. I don't know why I didn't. Called The Dance, where it was out in like a salt flat somewhere. And it was like a demon and someone dressed in white, and they're dancing inside this circle. And it was a whole thing, right? Again, the, the, the all the ritual that's involved here. Opening portals. Now the eclipse. Um, yeah the preservation of all life in existence and the termination of all life in existence. The Rudra Pandava is a dance that especially displays Shiva's um, sadistic personality as he rains down the ultimate destruction upon a weary planet. Now the connection to the destroyer, Shiva, and then Apollyon, Apollo, uh, um, uh, Abaddon in the Hebrew, the destroyer. Um, Again, we're talking about, you know, some deep spiritual stuff, not just science. This is not just about science. These people are half science, half, even though they don't talk about Christianity, it's full of this religious and, you know, symbolisms everywhere, right? The plaque at the side beside the statue, however, reads in part, hundreds of years ago, Indian artists created visual images of dancing Shivas in a beautiful series of bronzes. In our time, physicists have used the most advanced technology to portray the patterns of the cosmic dance. The metaphor of the cosmic dance thus unifies ancient mythology, religious art, and modern physics. So right there out in the open for all to see is a direct correlation between the Hindu perception of Shiva hundreds of years ago, which is the concept of destroyer uh, that I explained a moment ago, and our time unifying, quote, ancient mythology, religious art, and modern physics. Something is going on. You think everything... Think something's going on? I would think so. It's a conspiracy. Everything is. Additionally, and perhaps even more important, there's a significant section of CERN that is built upon the St. Genus Poili, which is a commune in Ain, uh, a department of France. In Roman times, the St. Genus Poili was called a Apollyacom, um, but the town and a temple were dedicated there in ancient times to Apollyon, the destroyer, the Shiva Horus, if you will. Apollyon uh, is also the angel of the bottomless pit, referred to in Revelation 9-11. And, and this is what I mean, you guys, the Bible is telling us already that there's this being, there's these beings, Abaddon's not the only one, he commands an army. Right. And we're told that at some point this this being, uh, this fallen angel is going to be released. Right. The destroyer. And then there is a connection between CERN and the Gothard based tunnel, the GBT, which is the world's deepest and longest tunnel system consisting of two parallel passages, each moving in a single direction on a single track. And, you know, this is where years ago when they finally opened this passage uh, that they're doing this at they had this huge ceremony 
And you're going to see some footage of that. And that is what I'm talking about. This is not just about science. Okay, right? The GBT passes directly beneath St. Gothard's Pass, a strategic um, north-south corridor that connects northern and southern Switzerland. Um, the connection to the Large Hadron Collider has to be made primarily because of the bizarre opening ceremony that was live streamed to the entire world on June 1, 2016, that included this highly occult, demonic dance with characterization, um, beginning with a call to unite the religions of the world by conducting an interfaith blessing of the tunnel beside a statue of St. Barbara, the patron saint of minors. Um, following the blessing at the statue of St. Barbara, the press, along with visiting dignitaries, also paid tribute to the nine miners who had lost their lives during construction of the uh, tunnel. Uh, Bodillo's southern portal provided the visiting dignitaries a disturbing parade rally of miners, erotic dancers, zombies, fallen angels, all of whom were obeying the call of what they called the shepherd, whose yodels invoked the appearance of the event's uh, infernal master of ceremonies, a goat man, um, portrayed by a young and energetic dancing male. This creature is shown with a baphomet headdress, a goat, uh, a goat demon's head, if you will, and a goat body costume with a hairy pelt. And then it had a formal tuxedo over the top. Um, the imagery was heavily evocative of the German and barbarian uh, Christmas demon known as Krampus. Now, according to tradition, Krampus accompanies St. Nicholas on his midwinter rounds with the intent to steal boys and girls, putting them into a basket carried on his back, uh, or he may decide to beat them with branches for being naughty. Uh, Maurice Bruce published a book on pre-Christian Alpine traditions in 1958, and he had this to say about the half-goat, half-demon entity. There seems to be little doubt as to the true identity for, in no other form is the full regalia of the horn god of the witches so well preserved. The birch, apart from its phallic significance, may have a connection with the initiation rites of certain witch covens, rites which entailed binding and scourging as a form of mock death. The chains could have been introduced in a Christian attempt to bind the devil, but again, they could be a remnant of pagan initiation rites. Many show the goat man uh, in formal dress and a tuxedo style cutaway um, formal coat and trousers, but with his usual horned goat face and always with his tongue extended. Now this tongue out pose seems to be popular with ancient uh, gods, whether they're Mayan, Hindu, Babylonian, Egyptian, Greek, or even British. Um, for some reason, the coat of arms from the Prince of Wales supports both a lion and a unicorn with their tongues extended, for instance. More than likely, this tongue position represents sex magic, fornicating with fallen angels. The ancient symbol of the horned god referenced by Maureen Bruce uh, in the quote that I made a moment ago. It allows us to connect our goat demon from the opening ceremony uh, at the uh, GBT to CERN. Despite the fact that the Large Hadron Collider uh, sits three to four hours down the twisty road from the location, the horn god's circular logic and passion for human depravity, uh, Hernunos, as is sometimes called, or Cernunos, uh, or the green man of British lore, uh, simply had to make an appearance at this occult ceremony. Josh Peck and I uh, and many other researchers have written extensively regarding the in-game plans for tunneling beneath the earth and smashing atoms to smithereens as nothing more than a thinly veiled attempt to open portals. But the opening ceremony at Gothard uh, made it clear that these portals are intended to do something else, and that is to release demonic entities. The twin tunnels of the Gothard base tunnel um, commence with twin portals on a single track. These northward and southward journeys symbolize the death-birth-death death cycle of the green man who dies in the fall and winter and rises in the spring-summer. The tunnel ceremony was all about sex rites and rebirth, leading to a new world order that's a complete reversal of the Judeo-Christian design. Uh, this included the triple goddess and the horned god, along with human sacrifice and a return to pagan worship, all of which lie at the center of this nauseating ritual play, which you can probably still watch uh, on YouTube. Dancers dressed as miners climbed this rock face and they dug into the earth, so to speak, to unveil what was beneath the earth, a great machine uh, formed from human arms that rotated and churned into various shapes and designs. 
uh, many of which resembled the Large Hadron Collider at CERN. Once this opening was achieved, the miners stripped off their orange jump shoot uh, attire. And I think that what you just saw there with the with the you know the veil on them, I think that's some sort of kind of rebirth um, is what that represents. Uh, and uh, took up arms. That is, they used staves to perform a dance routine that looked like warfare. It was this forensic dance that aroused a giant. So clearly, the endeavor um, connected to CERN is far more than Switzerland's braggadocio about an engineering feat. The connection between CERN and ritualistic summoning of a sleeping giant, the horned god of Cernunos, or even Melkart, uh, both are types of the rising... Notice the three scarab that's on the necklace here. You just saw that in the video that they were showing of, of uh, you know, they had, it was like actually people inside of a scarab um, hanging down. It's, it was the same necklace. Using dying God and Melkart slept for half the year, which may be why Elijah told the priests of Baal to call louder because he might be sleeping. Of course, I can only speculate, um, but I know the connection between Nimrod, Apollo, and Abaddon, Apollyon at CERN, and the history of the region uh, are all highly curious. Apollo was worshipped by the Romans of that area, as well as the Greeks and in central France. Apollo was equated with the Celtic god Atep Omerus. Uh, these two characters were combined to create Apollo Atep Omerus, which can be translated as great horseman or possessing a great horse. In the Celtic belief, horses were closely related to the sun. The interesting thing to note is the connection between this idea of Apollo being associated with horses in France, uh, where part of the LHC and CERN resides, and what the Book of Revelation states about Abaddon, where it says, And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were, as it were, crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon, end quote. I also note that Revelation chapter 9, after describing how these devil worshipers will be judged during the great tribulation period, it ends in verse 21 saying, neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, which is the Greek pharmakia, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Now, pharmakia is the word that describes the ancient occultic effort to use mind-expanding drugs during rituals in order to open a doorway for making contact with unseen supernatural entities. So, given these descriptions, is it possible that CERN will have something to do with the opening of the bottomless pit described in Revelation 9? All right, let's transition now to Daily Mail. Article I just saw come out today. It's CERN to test the world's most powerful particle accelerator during April solar eclipse to search for invisible matter that secretly proves that secretly powers our universe. The Higgs boson, the world's largest and most powerful particle accelerator, is set to smash the protons together on April 8 to search for invisible particles secretly powering the, our universe. Theories have suggested there are 17 different particle groups. And the European Organization for Nuclear Research, better known as CERN, confirmed the existence of one using its large hydronic collider, LHC, in 2012. Now the team has restarted the LHC with hopes to unraveling more mysteries of the universe, specifically dark matter. Scientists began preliminary tests by sending billions of protons around the LHC ring of superconducting magnets to boost the air, their energy and ensure the $4 billion machine was in working condition. And next month, CERN will shoot them down a 17-mile tunnel at nearly the speed of light to re recreate the conditions a second after the Big Bang. The LHC will continue the experiment until later this year when it will be put under a long hibernation for CERN to transform it into the next version, the high luminosity. The accelerator sits 300 feet underground at the border of France and Switzerland and the first went live on September 10, 2008. The LHC works by smashing protons together to break them apart and discover subatomic particles that exist inside them and how they interact. 
Scientists turn on the powerful machine this month, injecting it with several proton beams. CERN researchers, CERN researchers use protons due to them being heavier particles. The weight allows much lower energy loss per turn through the accelerator than the particles like proton. On March 8, teams from around the world waited inside the underground lab for a glimpse at the beams circling inside the ring of the LHC. The circular shape was by design as it allows for more time to accelerate the beam of particles so high energy can be reached. The first attempt of this uh, month did not go as planned after the beam only made it partially around. But this month's experiments proved the beam trajectory was off as it did complete a full circle. But after tinkering with the mechanics, the team watched and wondered as the beam circled the accelerator in less than 20 minutes. At full power, trillions of protons will race around the LHC accelerator ring 11,245 times in a second and travel just seven miles per hour less than the speed of light. On April 8th, the team will send the beams through the tunnel where they will collide. The, teams, the team will be on the hunt for dark matter. Is that a code word for demo, or, or entities? I don't know. Which makes around 28% of our massive universe, but has never been seen or proven. This work will give them insights into the formation of the universe and even its ultimate fate. The experiment is scheduled to occur the same day as the great North American solar eclipse. Wow. Well, wow. so a code that I found years ago when they were uh, initially just starting this, which is still relevant. By the way, I did go and look for some of the connections to um, the eclipse and the, and the blood moon and all that kind of stuff. And it all is there. But this is an annotated version that, that I don't know, what is this from? Doesn't give me the date. It used to show me a date. I think I want to say this is 2014, 2015, somewhere around there. Um, and the access term is gates of the abyss. Let's let's blow that up a little bit. Gates of the abyss is the access term. And we see uh, a connection to Sheba and Lucifer. Um, Sheba vertical in this Raphaim, which are the the spirits. Even the term as in the days of Noah appear in this with CERN crossing right over that. Of darkness. Coming together with my father is king of darkness. Nephilim is there in the um, green. And Raphaim right on top of it. Even sharing letters running right through the top there. Then we, we do see... Um, a connection to Lucifer at the top, the destroyer. Seven thunders are, are even here. That's that's I forgot about that. Atlas, Sheba's here seven times. Uh it, it says there. Then we have the computer. So Apollo also in here. So we see a, a all the corresponding words that do appear in a very small area it was moderate. Um, in the text, and um, there there is an actual another one, uh, and I believe the access term uh, is in the days of Noah, uh, where we can see the same thing. So this would have been a um, a cross reference, or or as I call it. A triangulation of the same thing. Yeshua told it as the days of Noah in the end. This would it be like. And so this code was worked in 2015. Um, and it seems how to have a connection to CERN, as you can see there. CERN in there several times up the soul. Um, how's it go? Gates of hell. And then Lucifer crossing uh, right over that. And I do believe that is Isaiah. Running through here. Wickedness in the plain text, judgment. And uh, evil is praised with running right across Satan. Evil is praised. Think about that with all the rituals, um, with the, all of CERN, where evil is being praised. You know, the, the, the production they did with all the dancers. Again, um, we can see a comet involved here, right? So 
again, this this table also has um, connections to the eclipse, but also the you know the days of Yah, and and you know that's a prophecy, prophecy about the day of the, the day of destruction, right? The great and terrible day. We do see Nibiru in here, crazy Hamas even, right? With all that's going on with Israel, how relevant is it is today? Uh, so we've done a lot of, of work on CERN, and um, this is just two, you guys. But Scott's done some as well. Let, let's um look at that. I saw him post this on Facebook, and then he told me he had he had worked on some CERN stuff. So here's two here. Let's take a closer look at the first one. Abaddon as an access term. Shiva also there. A star, Hasatan, all vertical, at the end of Sheol, as an access term, CERN, vertical. We find the word per portal, even Switzerland in, in there, nuclear. You know, and he's got highlighted Ezekiel 1, verse 11 through 14. We see a mention of Nephilim in the plain text. As in the days of old, he found Crossing with Shiva and Abaddon. Abaddon and Shiva all together, clustered there. Leviathan. Right? Very small area. That's in a width of 2014. Right? And incidentally, that's around the time, as you saw, 2014, 2015, in the last... That's when they were kind of really going at it with... Um, Make sure that transition because the last time I did this, you guys didn't see the codes I was showing because it didn't transition. So he's got here, I will open the bottomless pit, right? As an access term, we, we have the sign, Amashiach. Look at the, the symmetry of that. Angel, CERN, locust, all these little things that we've seen that are relevant right now, right? We've been talking about cicadas even. Um as a thing, as a part of a, a, a signal or a sign. 2026, he's found in the plain text as um, as a date there. And he also has Kachav. And then highlighted Ezekiel 14, 21, running right through the top there. You guys can go and see um, what that says. So there's been a lot of work done on CERN. This is really diabolical. There's no... There's no righteousness about that whole thing, right? Um, proving the God particle, Higgs boson, and the you know the flood of religious um, imagery and symbology and all that kind of stuff is it doesn't look righteous to me. So um, going back to the eclipse, you guys, I happen to see really good interview from a smaller channel that I want to debut. It's called The Writing of God TV. Where they interview Mike, uh, excuse me, um, Mark Biltz. And uh, Mark actually confirms some of the things that I've been telling you on this channel for several years about what the codes were indicating about this eclipse season. So I want to transition back to that, um, you know, get out of the CERN stuff, which there is a connection to it. It's not by chance that they're doing this, you know, on the eclipse. This is all about portals and, again, um, ritual involved here. Right. And it's not good. So but with Mark, uh, he talks about the meaning of these eclipses, And that's what, we're, we're, you know, the, the, we need to get back to what you is telling us, because we're, we're told that these things happen as a sign, as a signal of something coming down the road. And for many years, I've been telling you um, what that is. Mark confirms that in this interview. So I want to play that from writing a God TV with Miles Jones, who was a scholar. Uh, go and subscribe to his channel, you guys. He, it looks like he's just getting started, but he's got good content. And so let me play that for you and we'll comment on it. Really good um, interview here. Of the writing of God, we get to speak to the expert in celestial events, Mark Biltz, who did the incredible research on the blood moons and now has come out with a new book, America at War 2024, about the total eclipses that have been seen throughout America and what they foretell since the Revolutionary War. So stay put, we're going to it right now.
join ancient language linguist, author, educator, and biblical archaeologist, Dr. Miles Jones, as he explores the writing of God. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the writing of God. Today, we have the incredible pleasure of talking with Mark Biltz of Shaddai Ministries. This is fantastic because he has a new book on the eclipses and their meaning for America called uh, America at War 2024. Did I get that right? But yes. Mark, it's so good to see you again. And uh, I'm still reading in depth your, your last groundbreaking work, which was on the blood moons. So I'd like to talk about that work first, if you don't mind. And maybe we could start by explaining to our listeners and our viewers what a tetrad is. Oh, yeah, great. Thank you so much for allowing me to be on your program. Uh, but well, a tetrad. The privilege is mine. <laughs> well, thanks. Uh, a tetrad means four total lunar eclipses in a row without any partials, penumbral in between. Now, according to NASA, I, I only like to use science, math, and the Bible. And according to NASA, if you go to their website, there's been 12,000 total lunar eclipses over a 5,000 year time period. So that's a pretty good wow. average that we can draw from. And of that, over that time frame, those 12,000 eclipses, uh, over 5,000 years, you only get one total lunar eclipse every year and a half. Okay, so that core, it would take six years to have four total lunar eclipses. But guess what? Here, in 2014 and 2015, I noticed four total lunar eclipses in one year and a half. So this is beyond the statistics. It's astronomical, I like to say. And so, I tried to find out, okay, what's going on? And I was in my prayer closet about four in the morning, which literally was my walk-in closet. And all of a sudden the Lord just hit me with, put him on the biblical calendar. So I put it on the biblical calendar and noticed the four total lunar eclipses in a, just a year and a half happened on Passover and the Feast of Tabernacles. Passover and the Feast of Tabernacles. And Both so years, that, two years running. Yes, and so it's like, oh my goodness, I this is uh, unbelievable. So I had to find out when was the last time it happened. So I looked and it happened right at the 1967 Jerusalem war. And then I looked again, it happened when Israel became a nation. And then I looked again, it was uh, right after 1492 when all the Jews were expelled from Spain. And they even went to 70 AD when the temple was destroyed. There were solar lunar eclipses all around the destruction of the temple. And we know from Genesis 114, God created the sun and the moon for signs. Right, he did, I mean, that's exactly right. And these, these tetrads, four blood moons, two years running on the feast days of Passover and Sukkot, both years, have always been very fateful moments for, for the Hebrews. Not always a disaster, but a very fateful and challenging moment. In, uh, the, before this, we've had three of them in the past 75 years. At the independence of Israel and the pitched into war with the Arabs, at the, the Six Day War where they went against five armies, right? And at the Hamas Tunnel War in 2014-15, just back around the corner. I have a, a story about this because I recovered the Hebrew Gospels from Catalonia in 2014 and 15, right during that tetrad. And okay. they had been taken from Spain in 1493 and 94 during, there, there's been 500 years since the, the last tetrad and, and the next one in history was almost 500 years previously at the expulsion of the Jews and the Messianics from Spain. The Messianics were fleeing the Inquisition and they took their Hebrew Gospels with them, the Hebrew Gospels from Catalonia, which I recovered at the last test trad in 2014, 2015, and was able to do services from those manuscripts that hadn't been done in 500 years. It was a really moving moment for me. And I know you, you know a lot about that. So uh, tell us, tell us what you, the significance of these tetrads that you've noticed. Well, they've always meant war. And the, the, what they say within mm -hmm. Judaism is uh, the blood moon or the total lunar eclipse refers to Israel. A total solar eclipse refers to the Gentile nations as far wow. as judgment or things coming. Well, guess what I found out? It's mind blowing. This is what's in my book, America at War. I finally found out what the 2014, 2015 blood moons were all about. It wasn't until recently. I always knew they meant war, but get a load of this. The 19, well, let me say this. The year of Jubilee can only be proclaimed on Yom Kippur. Mm -hmm. 1973 was the year of Jubilee. And it was on Yom Kippur that the Yom Kippur War happened. Well, the 1967-68 blood moons was a seven-year warning 
before wow. the first day of the Jubilee cycle was the Yom Kippur War, and the 2014-2015 Tetrad was a seven-year warning of the last day, the very last day of the same Jubilee cycle in 2023. It was on right. the last day of the Jubilee. So here the Jubilee is bookended by war and war and bookended by eclipses on both sides. Wow, that's amazing. That's incredible. Somebody's doing something and it's not random. One one thing I like, uh, you know, about this, what he's talking about here is, is it's very interesting because these tetrads, and like you said, in 1968 was foretelling something down the road, which which would end up being a Shemitah, right? But the fact that he's discovered that it was a Jubilee year and the, and the fact that we've come through a complete Jubilee, because I was born in 1973, we've come through a complete Jubilee cycle in my lifetime and now here we are again with these signs right and we've had this series of 2014 2015 uh tetrads that happened on hebrew feast days pentecost and excuse me passover and sukkot right very significant every time that happens it's very significant and we just had that if you were on the agricultural calendar you know that the blood moon we just had over north america and south america happened on passover and then we have this eclipse that's about to take place here in a couple of days um in the middle of where the rest of the uh hebrews are having passover and um i won't comment too much on that but these things are always significant you guys and i've been saying for years that war was coming to the whole world in particular to the united states okay that we were going to get involved in something that was going to cost many lives. Bible prophecy tells us that it doesn't. It doesn't take just me, um, you know, bringing a word. I'm finding that in the codes, and it's correlating to the very scriptures that tell us that. Okay, that the great and terrible day is coming. The the, the, the moon is going to be blood, uh, turned to blood, and the, and the sun blotted out. And uh, you know everything that we read in the prophets about th this timing, right? We we've given an indicator by what the prophets say. So uh, very good presentation. Um, there's a, so that, that would be the question for people. Why, with all of these things and all these events that happen on them, I think we should listen to what they mean and what God is trying to tell us. Wouldn't you say that's true? Well, yeah, absolutely. Because the nice thing, there's no false prophet can manipulate an eclipse. We, we know during <laughs> Moses' day, they tried to copy the plagues that Moses was doing. Well, you can't manipulate an eclipse. And an eclipse speaks to every language tribe nation tongue everyone knows the meaning so that's why god said he uses it for signs now you may know this but the letter tov which is the last letter of hebrew literally means a mark or a sign right and it has the numerical value of 400 it, like roman numerals have you know letters for numbers so does hebrew the letter tov which means signs has a numerical value of 400. well guess what the creator did how in the world, think of the sun and the moon, where the sun is a 400-story building. Can you imagine a 400-story building? And next to it yeah. is a one-story building. Is the one-story building going to hide from view the 400-story building? No. no. So how come, how come my thumb can block out a building? It all has to do with size and distance. Well, guess what? You can look it up. Scientifically, the sun is exactly 400 times bigger than the moon and exactly 400 times further away, which is why we can have an eclipse and there are signs. Right. That's one of that's one of the it's called the what do they call it? The security zone, the life zone where that gives it the possibility of life growing on this planet, because we have exactly those dimensions correctly. If not, the moon, our, our planet, the moon is going to fall into our planet. Our planet may lose its path or fall into the sun. It's it's an amazing balancing act, but it oh allows God. you to see it allows you to see eclipses, which allows you to discover so much information about the universe. People don't really understand that very much, but I know that you do. And it says in Genesis and also in Psalms that the, the heavens give forth information, they pour forth knowledge day and night, and it will be seen to every tongue in the world. Well, what is yeah. it that can be distributed to every tongue in the world? They will see these signs in the heavens. It doesn't matter what language you speak, exactly. you're gonna get that knowledge. And uh, it says in Psalm 19, the heavens are declaring the glory of God. Right, and, uh, they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people have to understand there's a big difference between astrology and biblical astronomy. Astrology is all about you. Well, I'm not interested in you. Sorry. But right. biblical astronomy is all about God. And that's what we need to look at. Well, guess right. what? Those are signs in the heavens. So the, the soothsayers, they are abusing the use right. of the, the heavenly signs you exactly. know, to, for their own ends, for their own ends. But get a load of this. Now I want to talk about solar eclipses, which means judgment on the nations. 
there's only been 12,000 solar eclipses in 5,000 years, and you only get one total solar eclipse every year and a half also. Well, guess what? When I looked at the total solar eclipses that crossed the whole United States, not just a little corner of it, like just Florida, but across the entire United States, either horizontally or vertically, since we've become a nation, there's only been eight total solar eclipses. And guess when they fell? They fell during the Revolutionary War in the 1700s. They fell during the Civil War in the 1800s. They fell during the Vietnam War in the 1900s. And here in the 2000s, we had the Great American Eclipse exactly seven years ago that went from Oregon down through South Carolina. Now, this April 8th, we have one going vertical from Mexico through the uh, United States and over Canada. This is within seven years, we have two total solar eclipses. And I'm sure you've heard where they intersect. Yes, I have. Yes. They intersect right here where I live in Kerrville, Texas. And I will be handling the events for all the people that come. Now, this is the, this, we've had two eclipses counting this one, within six months. We had the annual yes. eclipse, and that was in October, and now less than six months later, we're having a total eclipse, which is only seven years. Uh, you have the 2017 eclipse, and right. the one that's coming this time, and, and with all these three eclipses, yes. it forms an aleph over the United States. It's exactly. incredible. Exactly. And now, the where they intersect in Texas is in an area known as the Texas Triangle, where the number yes, one... Yes, hold, hold that thought, hold that thought. I want to hear all about this, but we're going to take a break, and we'll be back in just a moment with more of this fascinating discovery about total eclipses over the United States of America. So hold on for one minute. We'll be right back. I'm Dr. Miles Jones, and we have prepared for you an amazing teaching series called The Writing of God. We're going to take you to Mount Sinai and examine all of the evidence of the Exodus, both old and the new. So that's a little commercial here. Let's let's uh, get through that. Bless Miles. Yeah. But for the sake of time, let's get through that. Human sex trafficking. Uh, and so I should really see this as judgment coming on America because of our immorality that is rampant, where here the United States is participating big time in human trafficking, slavery. No, I, I agree with you completely. We are only like a stone's throw from Eagle Pass here. By the way, we started enforcing the law and it's reduced it from 10,000 migrants a day down to a handful. So something is happening here in the state. But I definitely agree with you. If you, if you grab a, a child off the street, you get a free pass into the United States. Do you know how much that has skyrocketed sexual slavery in the United States, especially of children? It's inconceivable, incomprehensible uh, yeah. that, that that is happening, and they're letting it happen. I think well, it is. I think we don't have to explain to our viewers what's happening in our country and the world. I think there would be very few that wouldn't look around and see the, the, the evil that has impregnated all our institutes. So oh, take it from there. We're in the well, Texas was, Triangle. The, well, the amazing thing is the next place that intersects with the 2017 eclipse is in southern Illinois in an area known as Little Egypt. There are cities around wow. it called Karnak, Goshen, Thebes, Cairo, an Egyptian health museum. And the university there has a pyramid and the god Horus as its logo. That's where wow. it's intersecting. And it's right near the Madrid Fault, which is fascinating. Right. I've heard of that. It's in the New Madrid area where it crossed before. And that's significant, uh, I would think, you know, for, for all that's going on here. But wait, there's more. Guess what else? The timing of it. You have to get on God's calendar. April 8th of 2024 is on the biblical calendar is Nisan 1. The very day that God said, this is the beginning of the year for you. It's the very day of the original plagues in the Exodus of the three days of darkness. And here's where I disagree with Mark on this one point. I, I do not agree with him on that. Um, April 8th is not the beginning of the year. Um, this is in a month of Abib, and the Jews have added an Adar 2 this year. So we're in, in to them at that time is Adar 2, not Abib. Okay. So we, <laughs> I know there's a lot of confusion on the, and we're not teaching on the calendar right now, but you guys, you got to trust me that the biblical calendar is an agricultural calendar. It is tied to the beginning of the year, which is Abib, which has always been connected to the spring solstice okay and i know you can't find that in your scriptures but we know historically from philo and josephus that is a fact okay so i just have to add that caveat wow the same day. 
and it's happening over Little Egypt. This is a, a, a replica of the original plagues that are coming. Wow, I did wow. not know that. That's, that's yeah. incredible. There is one thing I do know about it, and you may have heard of this, is that there was a, there was a total eclipse in Nineveh in 763 yeah. BC. We can retrocalculate these events, and we've used them to establish that the biblical timeline is the correct ancient timeline. Well, this happened in 763 BC in Nineveh, a once great city that had fallen into yeah. iniquity. Yeah. And during this time, Jeroboam was on the throne in Egypt, and Jehovah yes. sent the prophet Jonah to Nineveh yes. to warn them, and he went. And we all know about the fish. What we don't know is they worship the fish, Dagon in Nineveh. So when he came yeah. out of the mouth of the fish, they listened to him and they repented and the country was saved. But the thing people don't know, there was a total eclipse. There were riots, there were plagues, and the people did repent. Now, the reason why this uh, very this fish thing is kind of in interesting, remember in the code that we looked at on, the, on the, the eclipse, we saw the verse where it talks about the sun and the moon um, and the eclipse pattern and uh, the the fish gate, right, um, which I believe is a direct reference to the Maserat, right? And so I made the comment how interesting it is that the sun is actually moving from the fish gate, from Pisces into Aries at the moment of the eclipse. It's moving out of the fish gate. So very interesting connection there to Dagon and the fish. Very hopeful lesson. So what does that have to do with this eclipse coming up in in, which goes uh, back to, April, to April. I should have summed up, <laughs> which goes back to, to the story of Jonah, right? Okay, so that's exactly what happened in that time. It came, came out of Pisces going into Aries, and uh, th th that's when that sign happened. And then we see the connection to, with Nineveh, yada, yada, yada. You guys get it, right? Eighth, and I think you know the answer, right? Oh, yes. What is amazing, and what I have in my book, there are a series of eight total or of eight solar eclipses, lunar eclipses happening over the next two years. And guess when they lunar eclipses fall? On the same day of the one in Nineveh, back in 763. The month of Elul is the month of repentance. Jonah's 40 days preaching repentance was from Elul 1 to Yom Kippur. It was the same 40 days Jesus was in the wilderness. It was the same 40-day time period that Moses was up trying to make atonement for the golden calf. A month of Elul is the month of repentance. This is the same time when Jonah was talking to Nineveh. All of these are repeats of history. Very interesting. And guess what? That there are lunar eclipses that are happening on Elul 15, the month of repentance, and then they happen on Purim the month of Amalek being defeated. And then the next year they happen again on Elul 15 and again on Purim with the defeat of Amalek. And the solar eclipses are falling on Nisan 1 and Tishri 1, Rosh Hashanah. Nisan 1, Tishri 1, two years in a row, we're having these solar lunar, lunar eclipses falling exactly on the biblical holidays. Wow, that is, that is really amazing information. Let me tell you an additional thing to add into your, into your, your research. This will be at noon, 12:14 in, in Texas. Now, there is a Nineveh, Texas. Did you know that? Yes. The, the solar eclipse will be visible over, over uh, Nineveh, Texas, within a few minutes later. It'll be visible over Nineveh, Oklahoma, a few minutes after that. It'll be visible over Nineveh, Missouri. It'll be visible over Nineveh, Ohio. It'll be visible over Nineveh, Pennsylvania. It will be visible over Nineveh, New York, and it will be visible over Nineveh, Nova Scotia. That's incredible. Yeah. Eight, eight Ninevehs on the path of the, the totality, the line of total viewing between Nineveh, Texas and Nineveh, no Nova Scotia. That's yeah, uh, pretty incredible eight, connection. Well, all, eight, all eight cities will see the total solar eclipse, but only about four in the actual 100 mile path of mm -hmm. totality, but they all will see it. But to me, the timing is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But wait, there are more. Guess what? Tell me. Four these next two years, if you go to Numbers chapter 1 and Numbers chapter 9 and 10, the tribes of Israel were all encamped around Moses' tabernacle as God appointed them. And whenever they traveled, the east went first, then the south, then the west, then the north. And in my book, I mentioned how they travel, and God lined them up for war. And all had to do with war. They had to be an organized army, not some ragtag army. So when they go to leave to take the promised land, we see the order that they're leaving and because there's 12 tribes and there's 12 months, each tribe is assigned a month. Well, I looked and the solar lunar eclipses over the next two years 
fall in the months of the exact order, exact order wow. of how they went to war, of how they went to war. So over the next two years, this is why I'm saying America at war 2024 through 2026, because the And guess what, you guys? The codes have been revealing that. I've been telling you for a couple of years. I didn't know what it was about 2024, but I knew it was very significant. Now I've been on record saying this for years, that it's a very significant year, not only because of the election, and that's going to be some funny business there, but also the fact that we've had plagues happen, and I saw that with the 2017 eclipse and predicted it in 2017 that we would see a pandemic, and it happened. But also, I was saying, you guys, the, these eclipses are foretelling war that's going to come, okay? Is that a civil war? Is that a world war? You guys, it could be both, R really. Um, if you really look at it with the election that's going to take place and whatever takes place, whether it goes Trump, and I pray it does. I pray it does. But the way it looks like to me is the very same as the last time. Funny business happened. You all saw it. We called it here months in advance. Okay? Same thing looks like it's going to happen. But if it don't, if it don't and Trump gets in and right it's going to be bad either way there's going to be a huge division even more than we see now all right a nation divided cannot stand right and our enemies see this we're very vulnerable now and if we have what i foresee us having you guys it's bad days ahead and i don't mean to be a doom and gloomer i'm being a realist with you okay that's what it, the information looks like it's telling you right so there's no question Yah communicates with signs and wonders, but he's also going to confirm that he's going to send witnesses and confirm a matter. Sometimes he will even send prophets to speak a word. But here's the thing. we got to test all things. I got to say the tests are coming back pretty positive for chaos in 2024. Um, no question about it. The, the fact that they're doing the, what they're doing with CERN, you guys, and, and the intention is evil. That's not about science, right? Big Bang, right? The God particle, all the, all the all the theatrics with the demons and all the stuff that they do, the rituals. This is more ritual than it is science. We see in Revelation where we there there are beings, demons, Raphaim, Nephilim, that come out of the pit with a commander called Abaddon. Then there are four fallen angels at the river Euphrates, which, by the way, is dried up. And they're going to be released. And what do they do? Go read it, you guys. We're coming upon these days. No question about it. No question about it. That's why I feel this sense of urgency in my spirit that these things are very important. And it's not. I know there's some wild left field things out there. There's stuff about the eclipse and this and that. But I'm telling you, on a just... On a biblical mindset, <laughs> what they mean, Mark Biltz is confirming that. He is absolutely correct. It always indicates war is coming, okay? Heavens are declaring it through the signs that God has proclaimed war is going to be coming over the whole world in the next we, few years. We better listen. I advise all of you to get his book, America at War 2024. And... We're talking about Moses. Maybe you'd explain to people your T-shirt that you're wearing. Yes, I have a T-shirt that is guns and Moses, not guns, guns and, and Moses. Moses. Guns and Moses. So it declares it. It show, talks about the words that are coming, and we will. I'll be really eagerly awaiting your book, America at War 2024. And I thank you so much for being here, Mark. Well, thank we will, you so much for having me. You're a blessing. Uh, we will talk to you again soon, and right. for the rest of the viewers. Hang on one moment. Very good presentation. Again, that's a writing of God TV. I'll put a link down in the description down below. Go and subscribe. And guys, look, he's obviously just now building his channel. Very good information there. He's a scholar. Uh, he's been to uh, Sinai, obviously, with some of the back uh, B-roll you see at, at his channel. Live stream for me to go to Sinai, to go to the Rock of Horeb and uh, all those places. Um I've dreamed about it, and um, one day, maybe so. But there are people doing t tours there now, you guys, which I think is, I think it's good and bad. I don't want, I don't want to see the, that place commercialized, but 
I do want to go there myself. I do believe it's holy ground. I do believe the biblical account happened. The Exodus happened. They were all there. I think the archaeology proves that. And uh, it's just a place that I'll, I'm drawn to. And so we'll, we'll have some teachings on on that uh, I've done before. And uh, they're very fascinating using Google Earth and actually zooming down to those very places um, that Miles talks about on his channel there at Writing a God. Very good channel. Go and subscribe to him. And uh, speaking of subscribers, I want to thank those that have joined me on, on this channel in the past couple of months. Uh, thank you for, for joining us and sticking around and watching the videos uh, and helping us grow. May y'all bless you and keep you. Uh, and uh, maybe we all grow together, you guys. All right. So um, that's all I got for you in this. You know, this solar eclipse is very meaningful. It does have meaning to it. But um, to what extent, right? And the, the fact that CERN is doing what they're doing on that day, uh, and it's not good that they're doing that. Um, what will happen, I, I'm, we can all speculate, but I wouldn't expect anything to happen on the day. The, a, the eclipse like that is usually a warning of something coming down the road, not, not necessarily something that happens on that day. In fact, it turns doing that, I think they're using the, the portal effect of these kinds of events. And I think it's witchcraft and sorcery and uh, a lot of those kinds of things connected, which were was in the code, by the way, that I, I was looking at years ago. So uh, it doesn't surprise me they're doing this on a solar eclipse. Um, I would pay attention. Let's all pay attention. You guys see anything significant? Send it to me. We'll talk about it. We'll get it on here. We'll search it out. Um, until then, we just maintain. Don't panic. Don't freak out. We're just observers here, right? Um, yeah. If you guys are interested in searching codes and you want to learn how to do that, I do have a school going. It's very affordable. If you'd like to do it, and I provide the code programs, teach you how to use it, teach you some biblical Hebrew, and uh, turn you loose um, and see what the Holy Spirit can do with you. Uh, we're in a building stage right now, you guys. I'm just getting back into that. If you're interested, email me. It'll be in the description below. For those that have already emailed me, check your emails. I have responded to everybody in one form or fashion. Okay. Um, let's talk. We'll get you in the course. You haven't missed much. It's all recorded. You'll get to see it. Right. For the rest of you, shalom. May you bless and keep you safe. Make his face shine upon you. We'll see you in the next video. Shalom.